Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at the primary and secondary impacts of tectonic hazards. This is part of Paper 1, Unit A, The Challenge of Natural Hazards. When tectonic hazards occur, they result in numerous primary and secondary impacts. Often students and teachers find it tricky to distinguish between the two. But it is important to be able to do so as they often come up in nine mark exam questions. Primary impacts are the direct impacts of the natural hazard. So they are caused either by the earth shaking or a volcano erupting, and they happen during or immediately after the events. Primary impacts include loss of life and numbers injured. In earthquakes, this is those who are killed and injured by collapsing buildings and falling rubble. Primary impacts also include buildings being destroyed, such as homes, businesses, schools and hospitals, as well as transport infrastructure, such as roads cracking, railway lines buckling or being blocked by debris, and ports and airports being damaged. We also have damage to utilities, such as water pipes and gas pipes being ruptured in the earthquake, and electricity cables coming down as the ground swallows up electricity posts. When volcanoes erupt, lava spills out covering farmlands and homes, or an ash cloud will completely cover everything. In 2021, there were spectacular yet horrifying ongoing eruptions on La Palma, one of the Canary Islands, just off the coast of Northern Africa, with homes completely destroyed. Ash clouds can ground flights as it becomes too dangerous to fly through, with poor visibility and the risk of ash getting into the engines. The most famous example of this was the eruption of A. Yulfiat Lul Yokuts in Iceland in 2010. Huge apologies there for the poor pronunciation. This caused enormous disruption to air travel as it grounded flights across Europe for several days. Volcanic eruptions will also result in water supplies becoming contaminated. Secondary impacts are the indirect effects caused by the primary impacts after the main event. They occur in the coming hours, days and weeks. Like I said before, many people get confused between these and the primary impacts. Earthquakes often trigger tsunamis and landslides hours after the main event. These are secondary impacts. So primary impacts go on to trigger secondary impacts. For example, damage to road infrastructure would be a primary impact. And as a result, there will be a secondary impact of communities being cut off. Damage to water pipes would be a primary impact, which could lead to outbreaks of cholera, which would be a secondary impact. This was a major loss of life in the devastating Haiti earthquake in 2010. Damage to electricity cables would be a primary impact, which could lead to fires and power cuts as a secondary impact. Volcanic eruptions can cause glaciers to melt, leading to flooding. The melt water from this could mix with ash to form lahars or mud flows, which would cause homes to be covered. These are secondary impacts. However, there could also be an increase in tourism as people flock to see the eruption, especially in an effusive non-violent eruption like the one seen in Iceland in spring 2021, pictured on the screen. Here people pay lots of money for helicopter trips over the crater. So again, this is a secondary impact, but it is a positive one. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on the primary and secondary impacts of tectonic hazards. Thank you for watching.